Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, uh, today I actually wanted to draw Candace from Genshin Impact. So that is what I'm going to be drawing today for today's Draw Of Me session. Um, I'm going to preface this video with saying that I really struggled with the posing this time. I did do very brief, like, um, pose ideas in my sketchbook, like super brief, like not even like full. Uh, I think if you watch my Kaya video and my, what was the other one that I did? Nilu. I did a little bit more of like actually looking up poses and stuff or trying to figure out the body. But for Candace, I, I feel like I skipped out maybe a little bit too much and I became a little bit, uh, I don't know. I struggled a lot with the pose and I went through diff three different poses. So pose number one that you're seeing right now, um, I'm going to scrap actually because I realized, or at least I forgot, that if I do a profile for Candace, you won't be able to tell that she has heterochromia, which means she has dual eye colors, like two different eye colors. Um, she has like a nice deep kind of warmer blue, and then she has like more of a golden yellowy-ish eye. So those two, and I wanted those two to be present in the piece. So if I had her looking to the left with a profile view, I would only get the gold eye. But if I have her facing the right, I would only have the blue eye and I want both. So I decided to sketch out the second pose, which happens to be this one. Now I'm going to cut out quite a bit of the footage of the sketching portion, just because I don't end up using this pose. I actually go back and forth between this pose and the third pose because I thought maybe I could get this one to work, but then I realized this is almost like a default pose that I use on a lot of characters, um, especially if I don't have any frame of reference of what I want to draw. So I am going to scrap this one, which in my brain, I'm glad I scrapped it, but also like kind of, I struggle with the other one more. So yeah, we'll get into that. Not only that, um, when I first started drawing this one, her face became more uh, kid-like. Um, more younger, um, less, I don't know, like stronger features, if that makes sense. I made it very like soft and round, which I usually default for a lot of female characters. Um, I don't know. I think it's because like I tend to draw more cutesy um, females rather than more mature females, if that makes sense. Um, but Candace does, I believe she has like the larger, like the taller, uh, female model, so I wanted to draw her a little bit more mature looking rather than like, I don't know, like a teen or something, young adult. Um, so yeah, this is the pose that I ended up with, which looks very similar to the first one that I did, except that I wanted to have her face three quarters because obviously I want to get the eyes in. So that's what I'm settling with. I have her kind of more like a looking over the shoulder pose. Now my problem with this pose, I've done this, I think a couple of times. I might've drawn Toma like this and I've drawn Kokomi like this. I think out of the three, I'm struggling more with Candace's. I actually don't remember what Toma's looks like. I think Kokomi, I was hiding uh, a little bit of it so that it doesn't look as weird. But for Candace's, I think at this point, it doesn't look too bad. So when I start to add more detailing, in the sketch portion as well as the coloring and stuff i accidentally flatten her body a little bit more which kind of makes it look like i feel like if you look at the final piece i'm gonna say this now so like people you can stop your typing basically <laughs> um it kind of looks like she's facing forward completely which gives a weird look because her it's like it's the back view right so yeah, I know there's a problem with the anatomy and I know how to fix it technically. It's just there is some issues. So like I said, I kind of flattened the back a little bit weirdly and the hair cuts over where the receding shoulder is. So it doesn't look like it's receding anymore and the hair kind of makes it look like the shoulder is a lot wider than it is. So I should have probably avoided that tangent where the hair cut in front of the shoulder. The other problem I had was the neck placement with the head. So at this point, you guys can see that I kind of have the back already sketched out with the head, but the head became too big as usual. I tend to draw the head a lot larger than it needs to be and then slowly shrink it down. But this time, instead of shrinking the head down, I tried to widen out her back, which 
kind of backfired on me because I essentially made it look more flat so it's like facing forward towards us rather than receding to the side as it goes to the right um but yeah i think also adding like the ornamental stuff like the i don't know how to explain it it's like gold pieces on her back uh kind of flattened her back as well because i also didn't make it look like it was receding so now that we have all those out of the way let's talk about the sketching process um, I'm starting off with the 5x7 canvas, those are in inches and with 300 dpi as usual. And I like to sketch out the pose if I can first and then we get into the face usually because that's my most favorite part for, for sketching. Even just like drawing in general, I like drawing the face the most so. Mm. So I tried my best to, I don't know. I don't know, I had like an idea of how I wanted to draw her and this kind of was it and kind of wasn't. I think it's because I became so fixated on the back um, that I kind of tunneled vision elsewhere when I started to color and sketch the rest. But now all I'm like, I'm fixated on trying to fix it. But um, like I said, I'll get into a bit of the other pieces once we start to get to the coloring portion and stuff. But for the most part in general, I do like this piece. I think the coloring turned out nice and I did a background this time. Just very briefly did a background, very generic, but I think it fits um, the piece. So, hmm. Uh, so for the pose, like I said, it's a back view and her looking over her back, but I also want her shield present because I think that's also very uh, important for her character as well, just because, you know, she seems very much like will protect you kind of Almost like similar to MASH, if you know MASH from um, Fate Grand Order, she has like, or the Fate series, I guess, not just the mobile game, I believe, right? I think MASH, you know, I think she's from the just the Fate series in general, not just Fate Grand Order, which is like that mobile gacha game. Um, yeah, she also has like a giant shield, so I kind of wanted that to be present. And I actually had a lot of fun doing the details and the coloring portion. I actually took my time to actually work out Kind of like the crescent moon behind her head as well as the shield so whenever i'm doing like these more geometric shape objects i try my best to add as much line weight as i can in certain areas so it doesn't look too um mechanical if that makes sense i hate when i do like geometric stuff and I keep leaving the line weight as like one solid line without like variation it looks very I don't know, sterile and very unnatural. So I try to like try my best to kind of like thicken some of the lines, make some of the lines a little bit thinner in some areas. And I usually fix that as well in the coloring. So it looks a little bit less like clean in that make like it, more organic-ish, if that makes sense. So this is the back piece that I was talking about. You can see I drew it just at an angle rather than it receding, um, which I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I should take more time sketching the character off screen and before I like commit to a final piece, unless I want to commit to the final piece and like give myself as much time as possible. Usually when I do these kinds of videos, because I know I'm filming and I'm going to have to edit down these videos, I usually try to limit myself with time. I did spend a little bit longer on this one just because I did try three poses, um, more or less like two poses because this one's very similar to my first one. But I try to limit myself for time so that editing, I can dedicate kind of 10 minutes for each part, 10 minutes sketching, 10 minutes coloring or like rough coloring, and then 10 minutes for the cleanup and rendering portion for the video. But to condense like three plus hours into 30 minutes becomes very difficult. And I know some people who watch like the draw with me's are like, um, this isn't really a draw with me because you draw too fast and you cut stuff out. This is not the purpose of the draw with me. It's just kind of like provides as if you're drawing along with me, not drawing what I'm drawing. Like you're drawing whatever you're doing and have me with you, if that makes sense. Like if you want full process and stuff, I highly recommend you just watch my start to finish videos um, or any of like the keep me company videos, I believe. Anything that's like over an hour long usually is the ones that are not edited down. Cause I try to make like these kinds of videos as 
more manageable for you guys to watch if possible. I know some people don't mind long videos, but um, I just know like generally viewer attention, like shorter videos <laughs> tend to be a little bit better. Okay, so before I get entirely off topic, for the sketching portion for the moon, um, basically I did two crescent shapes and then I actually used the transform tool to deform it so that we could uh, push one side further back and the other side closer to um, the right side so that it looks like the circle is being kind of receding as well because it's technically supposed to be like right behind her head. Um, so I wanted it to be at least angled in a certain way and after that, I was able to add in a little bit of the details. And once again, I tried my best to vary the line weight so it doesn't look too mechanical um, and make it a little bit more like it's hand-drawn, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, you can see here where I had her shoulder drop on the right. Oh, here's actually my sketches from my sketchbook. You can see I didn't do a lot of planning and a lot of the proportions are off, but I just wanted to scribble to get the idea out basically. Um, but yeah, the one shoulder is covered by like a shawl kind of piece of clothing as well as her hair. So her shoulder kind of gets lost and it doesn't, it doesn't really show where it stops or starts. So I kind of lose the back part of it. I don't know. There's a lot of issues I could go on about. Um, just know that I tried my best to fix it at the end. So apologies if the time lapse suddenly changes. Um, at the very end to a different picture because I tried my best to liquefy and paint over little bits of areas that I could fix that didn't require me to paint over a whole portion of it. I feel like this one might be the ones in the future that I'm gonna redo. We'll see, we'll see. Um, for the background, so as usual, I set my sketch to multiply. I've also duplicated and hid a spare version just in case if I screw this up greatly, which maybe I should revisit. Um, for the background, you saw me show you guys a little reference because I I was gonna do like a night scene, but then I realized that maybe I should do like a night scene in the desert, but I didn't know what the colors would look like technically, and I didn't want it to be like piercing, not piercing, a just flat dark blue. So I looked up a reference. I found one that had more of a either sunset, sunrise-ish kind of vibe. But it had a lot more like teals and greens in it, which I really liked with the orange. And then after that, I just blurred the colors and I started to add in kind of like sand dunes in the background, just as very generic shapes so that it's not just flat background color and it looks more like an environment. So that is what I'm showing you guys right here. And I like doing this very simply by if you choose one color to be in the foreground of your background to be kind of like a more darker color, you can kind of pick out the sky colors along with your foreground color and kind of mix them to create more of a atmospheric look because as you recede back into the background, it kind of gets lighter and tends to blend in a little bit more with the rest of your background. So that is what I did. I added also a little bit more like cloud-like shapes on the back because my reference that I had almost had like a nebula or a starry sky visible but I didn't want to go full like starry sky unless I wanted to have clouds and stuff in focus but I knew I was gonna blur the background a little bit more anyways as I usually do so I just left things still a little bit more uh, simple. I added a moon because I wanted to have a little bit of a different lighting because I think at this point, I might have realized that the shoulders look a little weird. Um, but instead of fixing it for some reason, I decided to continue and I thought that maybe during the coloring phase, I was going to be able to fix it. But I'm pretty sure it's an underlying problem because I, I don't know. There's a lot of things I could have done to fix it. Um, either make her face look like it's less full on three quarters and kind of hide the... In, on the canvas, the left side, so the left eye um, receding a bit more so that you see it a lot less and her nose will become more prominent so she's kind of turning away a little bit more so it doesn't look like a weird forced perspective of her um, kind of just looking up to the left rather than her looking over her shoulder but yeah, now we're in the coloring phase um, of canvas so what I did is make a new layer above my background 
and because my sketch is set to multiply and I did set it to be a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer than my sketching color so that it kind of matches the skin tone a little bit better um, and that will prep me for when I'm cleaning and rendering it'll be a lot easier for me to match colors uh, and to basically just to make the lines look a little bit softer during that part so yeah it's just kind of like preference I know some people like leaving their line art just black and then adjusting the colors later um, but if you like to change the sketch color the same way I do just make sure to set it to multiply and you can either alpha lock it or change the hue if you didn't use like straight up black or anything that has no saturation you can just set it to whatever color you need to be and then you know match the colors after or before whatever your preference is basically so yeah I had a lot of fun painting her though for the most part so in general I really wanted to draw Candace for like ever since she was released because her color combination and her design is super pretty um, and I really like her character in general like in the story and stuff she seems like a very strong um, more independent very much like will protect you kind of person which I really like um, kind of like big sister vibes which is kind of nice um, hmm. I think that's about it in terms of wanting to draw her because I've been wanting to draw her since she was released but I just I don't know there's like a lot of things that I found a little bit intimidating um, and finding a pose that would fit I kind of want to do more dynamic poses in the future but then I feel like I should just break out of doing these 5x7 pieces I tried my best to do that in the, the Nilu piece because I don't know, I feel like hers required a more dynamic pose anyways because dancing is very fluid and I know I got a lot of questions on how I do anatomy. I personally do not think learning anatomy from me is the most beneficial. I wing a lot of the, the stuff I do, especially for anatomy. It's best to do like actual studies, so like doing gesture studies, looking up reference, doing like studies like if you see a model or just a picture of a person on like i don't know pinterest on google in a video i know a lot of people do dance practice um gesture drawing which is really cool um you can practice drawing the body that way and then there's plenty of videos online breaking down the body into different shapes i know people use the box method some people use the circles or the egg shape um Basically, like you're breaking down the body so that you kind of have like the chest area, your torso, then you have your hips and your pelvis, kind of your pelvic area, if that makes sense. And then you have like arms and legs are a whole different thing, just like fingers are a whole different conundrum. So, hmm. Um, let's see, what else? What else? What else? Hmm, I've been having a lot of fun painting gold objects though. I, I think out of this whole piece, other than her hair, Actually, I really like the hair with the skin tone as well. So I had fun painting those just because I was play like able to push a little bit more of the warmth and the cool colors a little bit. That's what I think I like about painting the gold objects too because you can have like really bright highlights, but once you get into the shadows, you can use purples, you can use blues, you can kind of use like bronzy, more green colors for gold. And it looks really pretty and a little bit more like... I don't know i just don't like using just flat brown or like red for the gold it looks really nice when you're able to push like the cooler tones in it and i think because of that i had most fun painting the shield um which is kind of surprising i usually hate painting those kinds of objects anything that's really mechanical or hard it's hard for me to like replicate the object to look not flat or really weird i don't know how to explain it it's like telling me to paint like a background of buildings i would do it really poorly <laughs> um so i would literally want to learn how to do that though because i know that's like a weak spot that i have like other than animals um kind of like animals or creatures things like buildings or like I think it's actually mostly buildings like I feel like if I can isolate an object I can draw it but buildings is something that I cannot draw without making it look like like a five-year-old drew it like it doesn't look like just a box with more boxes in it even like coloring it <laughs> it's very intimidating I don't know it's just like there's no way for me to make it look natural so it's definitely something I should probably do studies on in the future but yeah the shield shield was fun I don't think I made it the right size now that I'm looking at it, but 
for the most part, very fun. There was a, like, a bit of patterning. I got to play with the gold parts. There is like a glowing blue part as well, which I think is, looks really cool. And anything that has like edges, I think it's fun to push the shadows and then pull out highlights like right at the rim or right at the edge. So it looks really more like three dimensional rather than completely flat. Mm, what else? What else? Mm, another thing I was gonna probably have issues with. So usually when I do these kinds of digital paintings, I like to paint the background first and try to be as much like conscious about my color choices with the background in mind. But I knew that when I was coloring Candace, I did not make her fit the background completely. Like she's a little bit too light and like in your face than she needs to be. So I am going to be adding a multiply layer to kind of push her back and majority of the right side into shadow so that we can have a stronger contrast between the the light from the moon and like her back so that looks like she's actually in the environment a little bit more so that's why when i talked about like um some people can kind of do it both ways or some people strictly um rely on the blend modes to fix that or like remedy that it's good to know how to you know work your way you work your way around it if you need to so yeah i think i did something similar for like kuki shinobu because i think her her is like it was a much darker background as well and actually maybe i did a better job of matching the colors but i'm pretty sure i went back in and chose to do a uh, multiply layer kind of to push the contrast a little bit more too you can see that she doesn't really look like she's really in the space. It's not too bad. Like you can kind of tell it's a little bit of lower light setting, but I definitely wanted to push the shadows more if I could. So after I'm done the rough colors, I alpha locked my sketch and now I am changing the color of my sketch to match the surrounding areas just to make it appear more softer, like I said earlier. And I do this before I end up uh, merging the layers basically, cause I'm trying my best to make things look um, a certain way before I end up merging the layers because once I merge the layers I kind of have to commit to just painting everything in after but if there's like areas where you can adjust the sketch or your colors underneath before you merge you should do that probably first um, unless you want to do things more with like painting over top or something like that then you can go ahead and like do that pretty much right away after you finish coloring but mm. Right here is actually when I started to use the multiply over basically the entire right side of Candace and I decided to lower the opacity after and also made it a little bit softer so it wasn't as intense or vibrant because um, I didn't want it to be that jarring but after that uh, usually if I add a darker shadow like that I try to add a little bit more of like rim lighting usually because if it's hitting more of a deeper darker shadow there's probably a stronger light source which is what I'm doing here and I'm making it a much cooler highlight uh, just because the moon is a little bit on the cooler side and I thought it would help match a little bit with the glowing parts on the actual shield part so yeah but after that I'll actually dim it a little bit because I almost never use blend modes on full opacity so yeah just to make things not too intense and just doing final adjustments before i merge everything and we get to the rendering and cleaning up part of the process so hmm. i actually didn't show you guys when i merged my layers but yeah at this point my layers are merged so now i am switching over to the sharp render brush and i am just slowly going over areas to uh basically uh, make things look a little bit sharper or also adding like final lines and stuff into it if i need to um i had a lot of fun doing the hair i think it's because like i don't do a lot of like darker well, i feel like darker hair in general i don't really paint as much but also like this kind of dark blue it's kind of like navy or what is the color I'm looking for? Almost like ultramarine in a sense, kind of like in that area, which I really like um, because usually when it's like blue hair, I feel like it's more of that vibrant blue or almost like that minty blue color. Well, this one's a little bit more, a little bit more muted. It's on the darker side, but I really like the hair color. So mm, I think it really matches the gold, which is what I really like. So yeah, anything with like navy blue and gold, navy blue and red, or even like orange 
anything in that family I really like. So basically, instead of working entirely on her face first, I actually decided to do the hair because there is like sections that I knew I wanted to fix almost immediately. And then also, usually where the light hits really intense on the hair or on like the edges, I guess it's like the rim of it, I, I like adding like extra strands of hair just to make it look like it's catching the light and it looks really pretty in my opinion. Sometimes like I already said this before that uh, sometimes I add like little dart like dots and speckles because the dust can catch uh, the light and like you can see those particles and stuff and I think it looks really pretty even though it's dust. Um, mm. So initially when I painted the shield, I actually made the shield look like it had more of a sheen on the gold. I actually didn't realize how many other colors was present so it kind of looks a little bit weird so I'm gonna like buff it out a little bit because there's like a black area that's kind of like indented and then it has like the teal glowing part or not teal kind of like that light blue glowing part it's also indented so a lot of it got covered up but I had a lot of fun adding like the purples and a little bit more like muted blues into the gold but after that I painted a lot more of the hair. Her hair is a little bit more on the simple side for the most part. Um, not too many like intense highlights going right across her hair because she does have like that um, almost like a headband, head accessory going across her bangs, like right above her bangs. So it kind of like takes up that spot where I would usually do a band of highlights going across. And then because of her hair on the right is a lot in shadow, I didn't want to push the shadows to be like pure black so I kind of left a lot of it pretty simple because it's not really in focus anyways so you know I don't have to put too much uh shading or hair details into there because it's not like it's gonna be super visible anyways at night so mm. um yeah because of like liquefying and stuff there's some areas that looked a little funky that I needed to fix ex like especially on the right side of her because I was trying to figure out whether or not I should make the receding shoulder a little bit more prominent so we could see it or if I should just put it into the hair and under like that draped fabric completely so hmm. I don't know I feel like I have a lot of gripes with this yet I still really like it I think in the future also maybe I should say this apologies for anyone who wanted me to draw Candace in the first place um because I know like you guys a lot of people really like her character design her character in general um but I I don't know like I said I, I might redo this one in the future or revisit the sketch because I do have a duplicate of the sketch like I could just go back make the changes repaint it we'll see I don't know if I'm I'm that dedicated in changing it so maybe I'll just redo the piece and then like at another date um what else to talk about though sneak peek to Saturday's video I believe I'm gonna be doing the procreate gallery tour because it has been pretty much a year I think every mid October I tend to do a gallery tour of procreate because I think it's nice to do one once a year so you guys can see but I will also show you guys the condition of my paper lake screen protector as well as a close-up on what my pencil looks like because I think every year I did a photo I think I think this is year three of me using my apple pencil and the paper light screen protector and since it's been three years like I haven't changed either of them the pencil definitely has wear and my screen protector definitely has scratches and stuff but you know I feel safe knowing that the point of the screen protector is to protect my screen so I don't mind scratches I know some people mind um, because it means your pencil is probably really just in a place basically where it's tearing up your your screen protector a little bit weirdly as well as just like the texture in general but I think this year is the, mostly the year that I've noticed the most amount of wear on my pencil. But again, like it's at that point where I'm noticing it a little bit less. So it'll probably take maybe another year or so before I start seeing more wear. I am seeing like the little white part kind of coming off of the very tip of it, uh, which doesn't really cause me issues. And like I said, like in previous videos, usually when you buy the Apple Pencil, I don't know if it's like, this is only because like I bought it new so 
in the box, it usually comes with two, so you have one replacement. I haven't used the replacement yet, and hopefully I still have it in the box, because if I don't, uh, I don't know where uh, it would be then. So yeah, I will always have that spare for now. So I'm not really too precious with the one that I have. It just depends on the amount of pressure, how much you actually use your pencil with your iPad. So just make sure that you know that the amount of wear will depend on yourself because some people draw with a heavier hand. Some people actually change like, you know, pressure sensitivity on their iPad. Some people draw a lot more than some people who don't. So yeah, this back piece, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe everything else I tunneled visioned in and I did not care about this back piece part, even though this is what's partially throwing off the fact that it's supposed to be more of like the right side receding. Cause the way I drew it literally is basically just at an angle rather than pushing it back. So it actually looks like it's in perspective. Um, but yeah, I think in total, this one took five hours. Um, I'm taking in consideration like the actual editing portion where I try to fiddle with the, the rest of the body and stuff and I actually did a lot of liquefying off screen at the very end um, while I was editing this because there, every time I looked at the piece I'm like I can't tell I really can't tell so yeah I don't know if it's me saying my mistake is gonna make people notice it more or I don't know I don't know sometimes it's like that right if I mention the mistake people notice it more because I'm basically dragging your attention to it so I don't know if it's that big of a deal I just don't like it that much um, the pose because even like right here it looks so weird <laughs> maybe it's because her head's so big I don't know but basically I added one last layer with an overlay so I could change the colors so then after that I kind of dim it down quite a bit it's just like one last um part to make it a little bit more colorful at the very end it's not needed but sometimes i really like it if i want to pull the warmth like the warmthness of the character and kind of push more cooler colors in some other areas it's just really nice to add at the very end but uh yeah i decided to group the background and canvas together duplicated that group i am going to merge it or flatten it and then I am going to blur it and kind of do the usual thing that I do. After blurring it, I will erase near her face and usually wherever I want the focus to be so that everywhere else is kind of a little bit out of focus. Just preference stuff or, you know, playing with the piece a little bit more before we actually finish. I know it's not necessary, but sometimes I like the softer look on like the edges or like places where I don't really want the focus to be entirely at. But yeah, I think that is it for today hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and don't do what i did and kind of tunnel vision into into a place where you should really focus on the perspective but yeah i had a lot of fun drawing canvas i hope you guys don't mind how i drew canvas today maybe in the future i'll draw her again um but i feel like i should actually sketch her out more because I'm the type of person I feel like that needs to get familiar with the character before I start doing some stuff before I forget uh, certain elements and stuff because if I think if I did the back pose a couple more times with Candace's design in mind I would would have fixed that portion of the back a little bit better but here's the final piece and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time bye